Hello, and today we're going to go over player quests, just like the one you see on screen now. We will create this step by step and I'll explain everything you need to know about player quests. So let's just get started. But quickly, if you could subscribe and drop a like to help YouTube push this video to more aspiring game developers, then it would mean the absolute world. But now let's get started with the tutorial and learn all about player quests in Godot. Okay, so first let's create the UI for the quest system and the quest system is going to be within the NPC, but we're going to create a new scene just like we did with the dialogue up here. So we'll create a new scene. We'll make this a control node. And the control node we can rename to be our NPC quest. So if you want to have two quests, three quests, four quests, however many quests you want, they're all going to be within this scene. And I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do that. I'm going to go to the dialogue and copy this nine patch rect. And I'll explain exactly what this is. So the nine patch rect is just the box. I just want to make sure it's the exact same size as over here. So I'm just going to copy and paste it. And then the name and the text we can change up to fit the quest, right? This nine patch rect is going to be whatever you want to call it, we'll call it quest one, because this is going to be our quest one UI. So we'll call it quest one UI. And you want to make sure that you, you know, have this for every single quest. So if you're going to have one quest, well, it's going to be here, two quests, three quests, four quests, five quests, however many quests you're going to have, you're going to have the quest boxes, right? And each name, you know, for example, for quest one, the name is going to be worker, because that's who it is. And it's going to be quest. So it's because it's the workers quest box. The we would have to expand this, but you can see work request. And then in the chatting area, well, we can have something for chatting and we want the player to be saying something like, could you go pick up, you know, whatever the quest is, three sticks off the ground. So that's the quest. We're gonna have the player go pick up three sticks off the ground. Then it's going to go to the NPC and the NPC is gonna be asking this. And then once we do it, well, it's gonna congratulate the player because it completed the quest and this quest will be complete so when we try and go back, well, we can't get this quest anymore. It's going to say no quest available at this time, right? And we're going to create all these scenes now. So we're going to save the scene into our scenes folder. And this is, looks good for, you know, Q1. If we copy this, we paste it again. We're going to rename this one here. And this is going to be no quest. So what, what's going to happen when we want no quest? And here we're also going to have buttons on this work request here in just a second. But we can see no quest. We're going to name it no quest. And what do we want the name to be? Well, if there's no quest, it's... We're still talking about quest, so we want it to say work request. And the text can say something like, no current quest, please come back later, right? And we can just leave it just like that, and that can be our no quest. If we copy this one more time, we can make one more little thing, and we can say, if the quest is finished. So if we complete the quest, well, we want to congratulate the player. So we're going to say finish quest, name. We don't want it to say quest because we're just going to have the worker talking now and we want the text to say something like good job and I'm going to explain all this here in just a minute whenever we link it through code because it's going to make so much more sense but this is just our UI right so in our quest we're, we're going to hide all these because we don't want any of them showing except the quest one for now just so we can finish creating the buttons we're going to want a yes and a no button so we can come here we can add a button this first button is going to be named our yes button. So we're going to say yes button. And then this is going to be for quest one. So we'll put a one behind it. And the text on this is going to be yes. We can go down here to layout. We can go to transform and we can change up the size to maybe like 0.4. So it's a little bit smaller, just like this. You're going to see that it's kind of the background on this button's not the best. So we can just go change that. But for now, I'm just going to change the color just so it's easier to see only because we do not have custom art right if we had custom art well we wouldn't have to do this i don't know why i'm trying to make uh yes red yes needs to be green and then we're going to go we're going to add another button and this button well is going to be our no button one because it's going to be our no button we can say the text is equal to no we can go down here we can go down here to layout transform and we can change the scale to like 0.4 to match the exact same size and we can go down here to visibility modulate and we can change it to a red move it down here to line up with the yes and that's going to look good right so now all of the ui for the scene is complete now we just need a script to tie everything together and to play the ui how we need it in the background to check the player's inventory for how many sticks have been picked up during the quest and just to control how all the quests go, quest one, quest two, and every quest that you want to add, right? So it's gonna be very modular, but let's get started with the script. So for the script, we're gonna come up to our NPC quest. We're gonna click on new script, and we can save this just like this as NPC quest script. 
and in our script we're going to first of all we're gonna have a signal this first signal is going to be for whenever we want to close our quest menu so we can update it back to our uh our npc that we've we're done with quest so our npc can start roaming around the map just like we did with the chat in the last episode and we're gonna have var quest one and don't worry if you're not following the survival series this series or this video it will still help with quest right so quest one act complete because if the quest for us if the quest is complete we don't want to play it again so if the quest one complete is equal to true well we're not going to play that and we're going to show the other screen we're going to show the finished quest screen and if you have quest two quest three well you're going to keep adding those right so you're going to say quest two active quest two complete and you're going to have however many quests you're going to have you're going to do that right there and for quest one we're going to have stick right so we're going to have this for a custom variable for our quest one right and now if we create a function we're going to call this the quest one chat so this is whenever we make the quest one chat visible we're going to call this just when we're asking the question right so if we click q well we're going to call this from our npc's function well actually we're going to call this from a next script function but that's going to be called from the npc function so if we say quest ui dot visible equals to true well, that's going to set quest equals to true, right? And this is going to be called through our next script function. And this is going to, this is what's going to start the entire script, right? Because once we click a button, this is not going to do anything. This is just going to make it visible and it's going to make us be able to click buttons. And when we click buttons, that's where the magic is going to happen, right? So if we go to button, yes, we go to node and we pressed, we send this to our NPC GD and for no pressed, we send it to the same exact script. Well, we can come down here and we can change this. We can say um, quest quest one UI dot visible, right? And we're gonna make this false because now we're gonna hide it because we clicked a button and we don't want it to be shown if we click a button. Then we're gonna change quest one active to equal to true. And we're going to set the stick count to zero just in case it's not already set to zero. And then we're going to emit our signal quest, our quest menu closed signal which will later be linked up to our npc to tell our npc that to close all the scenes and to start moving around the map again randomly and we can kind of copy this we can put it down here we're gonna have to change up a few variables if we click no well we want it to equal false we want quest active to stay false we don't need to update any stick because we don't have an active quest and we're still going to emit the quest menu close right so that's going to be work and once we finish i'm going to go through everything and how everything is working in more detail but now up here we're going to have a function process this process function is going to be basically the entire brains of it we're going to say if quest one active so if quest one active we're going to check if whatever we're checking for right so what what's happening in quest one we're going to we're going to have to check if stick equals three so if stick is equal to three well this is where we're going to see if the quest is complete right because if stick does equal three somehow then the quest is going to be completed so we'll say print quest one uh well i guess we can print anything i don't know what i'm saying so we'll just say quest one completed right so because this is just a print statement and then we're going to have quest one active it's going to equal false because it's no longer active and quest one complete is going to be equal to true because we just completed quest one and if let's say you have another quest well this is where the other quest will be it will just say if you know quest two active and it just keep going so this is where you add quest two quest three all the way down right so once that's done well now we're going to have to send a signal to our npc for the the quest menu closed and we're going to connect um our player well yeah i guess if we go to our npc so if we go to our npc we'll just do this now we'll instance this We'll instance our quest scene into it and our quest scene will go to node quest menu closed we'll connect this to our npc and then whenever we close it well we're going to want to do the same thing that we have when we finish we'll say is chatting is equal to false and is roaming equal to true and this is going to do nothing now because we never even change this whenever we're in our quest right because up here you can kind of see this is what the chat does if we click chat we're, we click the chat button and then once we click the chat button it's going to change roaming and it's going to change chatting so the put so the npc stands still and the npc does not move we're gonna to have to do the same thing for the quest so we can come down here we can say if input if 
if input dot is action just pressed quest which is not a function right now but we'll go and create it we'll say print uh quest has started and we'll say our npc quest dot whatever our function is we have not created the function so this function that we're about to have to go into our npc and create is going to be our next uh our next um what's it called our next quest right so this is going to be our next quest function we're going to choose a quest so that's what we'll call and then we'll say is roaming is going to equal to false because we want our npc when we're talking to our npc we want it to be false and is chatting is going to be equal to true so that it can't move around and we also want to play the animation just so we can make sure that we're playing the idle animation when we are talking to our npc right so this is going to call next quest this function does not exist so if we go back to our npc quest and we create this function we'll create it up here we'll say function next quest this is what is going to actually call the quest one chat here right and the way that this is going to work is we're going to have to say we're going to check what quest we have completed so we're going to say if let's say we'll go in order so quest one completed uh if well, i guess if it's not completed so if quest one is not completed then we want quest one chat to be called right because that's when we want to start the the function and down here we can say i guess so right here this is where you would go if quest two or you do else if right so you do else if not quest two completed right and you keep going right this is where you put quest two and then you start quest two but for us since we only have one quest well we're not going to do that and we're just going to say if quest one's already completed then we want to show the no quest right so we'll say no quest um dot visible what happened wait so if quest one's not come yeah then we have no quest right now so we'll say dot visible equals true and then we'll create a quick timer we'll say await get tree and this is all going to make sense in just a second if it's not making sense already but we'll say create timer and we'll say three for three seconds time out and we'll make no quest dot visible equal to false again so it's hidden so basically how this works so far if we're on our npc and we click our quest button which let's go make let's go to project project settings input map quest and quest is going to be q just like that so okay so if we're in our npc and we click c that's going to start chat if we click quest though we're going to print quest has started npc.next quest is going to call that function and we're going to on our npc change roaming to false chatting to true so our npc can't move around and it stays still and it plays our idle animation it's going to be playing our idle animation as we call this function and this function is going to check and it's going to show the the quest one right because that's what it's going to show or it's either going to show the not no quest function it's going to show one of these right so if we have not completed the quest well it's going to start the quest so it's going to play this then it's going to show our two buttons right because it's going to show this and we're going to either click yes or no whatever we click is going to come back to the script if we click yes well it's going to say dot visible is false so it's going to hide it and it's going to say active equals true so if this equals active we're going to say stick equals zero and then this menu closed is just going to send it back to our npc and tell us that our npc can walk around again and it's going to hide the the ui because the quest is started and we don't really need the ui anymore until we've completed the quest so since quest one is active we're going to go up here and if quest one is active well we're going to be in here we're always going to be checking constantly if stick equals three how are we going to track the sticks right that's that's the question now well that's what we're going to work on now because we have to be able to track the sticks to be able to see if the quest is you know working right and to do this this is going to be a little bit more complex because we're going to have to go into our player so if we go into our player we're going to have to create some signals up here in the top and we'll just say signal stick collected and since we have three items in the inventory we're just going to do it for all of them real quick because it won't take long and we'll say signal slime collected right and then we'll come down here this is where whatever item is being picked up is brought through so we can just say print item 
well, we got to print the variable item, right? And then under the variable item, we're going to say in a second, or it's going to be if the string of item, because item isn't currently a string, we'll say if the string of item is equal to whatever the resource is. So we're going to get the resource number. And once we get the resource number, then th like, for example, this can be the stick. We'll do the stick first because that's the most important. And then we're going to emit the signal. Let me just write everything out. Then we're going to emit that signal. So we're going to emit signal for the stick collected that we just created just like this. And that's going to look, you know, that's going to work. But how are we going to do this? Well, if we go to our world, we click play. You can see that it shows and if we click a button it's going to disappear but it shows because we haven't we don't have it hidden if we click q it's going to pop up and we can click buttons on our player right so that's that's nice and that works good but if we collect a stick this is what we need you can see that it's going to print out this last number because this is the last number we collected so that's our sticks item id so if we go here well we can say just to make it easy, we can say resource and we can just copy this down exactly how it is. Resource dash nine two two three three five six four nine one five two eight one twelve. Just like this. And then under here we can say print picked up stick right so if we play the world you're gonna see that if we walk over a stick it's gonna say picked up stick so basically what this, that's gonna do is that's gonna emit a signal that we picked up a stick now I'm gonna go do this real quick for our other two items in a time lapse just because just to make it neat because so we have every single item so I'll be right back Okay, so now we're going to go and we're going to go to our NPC or we're going to go to our player. We're going to go to node and we're going to uh, connect our signal our stick collect signal to our NPC down here. And then basically in our NPC, wherever it's going to spawn, it's going to spawn all the way down here at the bottom. Well, we're going to say that we're going to call our NPC quest. So now that we're in our NPC, we can connect this to our NPC quest. And then we're going to call a new function, which we haven't collected or that we haven't created. And we'll just call it stick collected and we'll go into our npc quest come down here to the bottom we'll create this function right and this function is just going to be very simple it's going to say stick plus equals one and we can print stick just so we can see whenever we collect it just like this right stick for quest right so we just say stick for quest and then um that should be everything completed that looks pretty good so now that we collect our stick everything should work if we go here and we go to our UI we click the eyeball to turn it off we go to our world we click play you're gonna see that we have our NPC we if we click if we click uh, let's see so if we click C well we're gonna have our basic dialogue right be able to go do that but if we come and we click Q well, we're going to have work request because you go pick up three sticks off the ground. Yes or no. If we say no, it's going to disappear. If we say it again, we click yes. Well, quest has started. You can see it prints it. So we come down here, we click three sticks and it's not going to show it because we haven't called the finishing animation. But if, if you go and we click quest again, it says no current quest. So to fix that, so the, you know, uh, so our NPC says something. Well, to do that, we're going to go down here and we're going to have to call our animation in our NPC quest up here whenever sticks equals three. So if sticks equals three, well, we're going to say play finish quest animation, right? And we can create this function now. 
by coming down here to the bottom. So if we finish a quest, well, we're going to call this function. And this function is basically just going to say finish finished quest dot visible equals true. And then we're going to have another timer. We're going to say await dot get tree. And this is the final line of code for our entire game before everything works. Timer three for three seconds. So it shows for three seconds and then we'll say timeout. And then well, we'll say uh, visible equals false, right? So now if we play, you'll see that we have an NPC. If we click Q, well, the NPC won't move. It won't walk around randomly because it's in our talking stage. We click no, well, nothing's gonna happen. If we click Q again, well, we can click yes. Now we have a quest that started. We have a current quest going. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to click three sticks. So if we go click one stick, two sticks, three sticks, you can see, good job, thank you so much. And the quest has been technically completed. So if we go talk, if we click Q again to open up another quest, he's gonna say no current quest, please come back later. And that's because I just click Q again. But if we come here and we click C, well, our dialogue still works. So what's our NPC up to? Where he's gonna say hello there. I'm just working for the red company. We're out here chopping down all these trees. So that's why we had to go pick up sticks, right? So he, I go, what? And he says, yeah, we've got to make a profit somehow, but I've got to get back to work. So take care. And if we, you know, want to do a quest, well, we can't. So everything is working very, very, very nicely. And that is how you create a little quest system in Godot. So I want to thank you so, so much for watching. I hope this video was able to help you out. And if it did, then please hit the subscribe button so that YouTube can push this video to more aspiring game developers. But until next time, stay safe and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.